Good morning, good afternoon. This is a tropical update on Tropical Storm Helene for Tuesday, September the 24th, 2024. Now, if you are new and you really like these detailed tropical weather updates, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So to start off this video, here's a look at the latest true color visible satellite imagery provided by the College of Dew page. And as we can see here, that Tropical Storm Helene has evolved pretty quickly since yesterday with now a well-defined circulation. We can see the low-level swirl right here on the low-level cloud imagery. And then also we have a thick canopy of cirrus clouds that are trying to wrap all the way around on the up shear side of the system. This is looking a lot more healthier than it did last night with very light shear now that is beginning to develop over the system. So it's only a matter of time when this low level center begins to turn back to the northwest again and to the north over the Yucatan channel where it will find itself in very optimal conditions for it to rapidly intensify possibly at an explosive rate. So now looking at the zoomed out view over the Gulf of Mexico, including Florida here, the one thing that has been constant is this upper level trough that we talked about in last night's live stream and in yesterday's video, how this upper level low was shearing the system, was shearing um, potential tropical cyclone nine. Now that it is Helene, it's a tropical storm, but this trough is abating and it's weakening. And as it weakens, the system is now under the influence of a more anticyclonic flow here. You can see what we have going on in the upper level of water vapor imagery with these cirrus clouds animating in most quadrants and beginning to see that expansion beginning to shape up over the western side of the system. You can even see all these clouds um, really uh, um, beginning to expand rapidly now to the west than last night when they were restricted. But also, the system is likely to soon um, turn to the north and then eventually to the north northeast as we have this upper level ridge that is over the florida panhandle and also central florida with this um, circulation so when we look at the tail doppler radar mission that was conducted this morning we can see that the low level center while broad at this point latest satellite imagery does indicate that it's much tighter with winds that are near 45 to 50 knots to the north of the system so this is definitely in the strengthening phase right now based on the wind field to the north of the system and when we look at our precipitation data the system is definitely showing signs of quick organization so now the question that is on everyone's mind is how strong will tropical storm helene get and how soon will it rapidly intensify once it gets into the yucatan channel and the gulf of mexico in the next day and a half to two days before landfall so looking at the latest has a model on tropical storm helene and we can see that winds here are tropical storm force so that's what the plane found now going forward in time that the system will rapidly deepen by wednesday morning we already have a hurricane here with winds of about 70 to 80 knots you can see the purple there on the southeastern side of the center which indicates that this is going to have hurricane force winds and the nhc surprisingly actually shows that once this gets out of the yucatan channel though it really takes full advantage with the upper ocean heat content and the upper level environment and we can see how this really deepens at an explosive rate so by Thursday morning, we already have a strong Category 4 hurricane moving towards Florida. You can even see the wind field here indicating winds around 130 to 145 miles an hour. And those winds do continue to intensify. Look at this. This is near or attaining Category 5 intensity. This is the 06Z run. This is the latest run on the Haves A model showing us a Category 4, Category 5 intensity. And this remains that way up until landfall. So essentially, this is not weakening now at all until it makes its way on shore of the Big Bend of Florida. And that is a 921 millibar system with winds of 134 knots. And then once this gets on shore, it moves over Georgia. It will quickly weaken, but boy, it's going to have still near hurricane force winds well on shore 
of the big Florida coast. Now, taking a look at the Haves B model here, this is another form of the Haves group that is ran for her or Tropical Storm Helene. And as we go forward, the system rapidly develops and intensifies for tonight into Wednesday morning into a hurricane. You can see the purple here indicating hurricane force winds. But again, once this departs the Yucatan Channel, it really, really goes bonkers. It really intensifies at a very explosive rate uh, with winds here already attaining Category 4 intensity. This is by Wednesday night in early Thursday morning. All right, this is pretty concerning. And when we go forward here, we have a strengthening hurricane, winds of 150 knots. This would be a Category 5 hurricane on the haves B forecast. And this gets all the way down to 911, 909 uh, millibars with winds estimated between 140 to 160 knots. This would be a catastrophic, unsurvivable category four and five hurricane moving on shore of the big bend of Florida. Look at this. This would be a really intense system with hurricane force winds measuring this from the center Pretty, um, pretty large, about 24 to almost 30 nautical miles out from the exact center of the system. So this is really alarming when we see something this strong moving onshore. And still, this purple right here indicates still hurricane force winds even onshore. Yes, onshore of the Florida landmass, still showing hurricane force winds all the way through into early Friday morning. And this would make landfall by Thursday afternoon, though. That's what most of the models still indicate by Thursday afternoon into even Thursday evening. But of course, I want to show you all the H Wharf model, which has done a pretty good job at showing how strong this could actually get. And again, it does show that the system is hurricane intensity within the next 24 to 36 hours or so. Once this gets away from that area, though, it really intensifies at a very quick rate showing a Category 4 hurricane and possibly a high-end Category 4 hurricane moving its way over the big bend of Florida. And look at how large these hurricane force winds are on this particular model, extending all the way out to about, about 60 nautical miles out from the center. So this would be a very large hurricane wind field at the surface and wind gusts of hurricane force even on shore. And yeah, you're seeing it right there, 928 millibars with um, category two force winds. Over land, this again is over land showing us hurricane force winds. This would be devastating, catastrophic, and potentially unsurvivable. Now, the only model that's a little less bullish is the HMON model, all right? And as we go forward in time, it takes quite some time for this to consolidate and become a hurricane. Probably a tad bit of an outlier given the organization state that we're seeing, but still a realm of possibility showing a hurricane here in about two days, which again does not is not shown explicitly in the NHC forecast. So this is why it's probably an outlier, but it does still show this becoming a major hurricane before it moves on shore here of the Big Bend, Steinhatchee, Florida. And everyone in this area right here in this area needs to take this extremely serious you need to get prepared uh because this in this could end up theoretically as a very powerful category four hurricane at the very strongest potentially there is a outside possibility that this could end up becoming a category five hurricane right at landfall or just before landfall in the big bend of Florida, which that would lead to unsurvivable um, concerns or unsurvivable impacts perhaps. Now looking at the spaghetti plot on our intensity forecast on Tropical Storm Helene, it's no longer a potential tropical cyclone. If I refresh this, then we will lose all the data. I have a feeling about that, so I'm not going to do that. This is already a tropical storm. I want to make it clear right now, okay? So that now that it's a tropical storm, this is expected to become a major hurricane. And my peak intensity is above the NHCs. And I do now forecast that this will have winds up to 125 miles an hour in the next two to three days or so. All right. In the next two to three days, we're seeing a peak intensity here on the weather or David Schlotthauer weather channel 
of about 125 miles an hour. Still 115 from the NHC, but some of these models pretty aggressive. Three of them showing a mid-grade or even a high-grade Category 4 Hurricane and not far from our Category 5 intensity. So this has a very, very high ceiling right now still for category four and five intensity. You'll see this from the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, but our spaghetti plot is as such. In 24 hours, this is where it's at. In 48 hours, tightly clustered here. And then in a little past three days, so this could have another two and a half, two and three quarters, perhaps almost three days yet over the waters to further intensify before this makes landfall Thursday night or even maybe, maybe, maybe early, 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 early in the morning hours of Friday. Probably like 1 or 2 in the morning Eastern time is the latest that this would make landfall. But pretty tightly clustered, and we are now thinking right now um, portions of the Big Bend, including Panama City, Florida, really needs to be taking this seriously. I'm telling you all, um, do not, do not stop preparing for this system. Looking at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, hurricane watches are now up and ready for Tampa Bay, Florida. This is serious. So Tampa Bay needs to be taking this quite seriously. Very populated area. St. Pete, Florida. If you're in Steinhatchee, Florida, also in Panama City, Florida, you need to take this seriously. This is nothing to mess with at all. Nothing to mess with. Um, this could be, um, this will certainly be a life-threatening situation, potentially a catastrophic situation with this becoming a major hurricane by Thursday morning. And then by Thursday night, it makes landfall as a very powerful Category 3, if not a Category 4 hurricane and could be stronger in theory. We have hurricane watches and tropical storm warnings out already for the, um, basically for the, um, or the Yucatan Channel, that's what I was looking for, and that would be for early Wednesday morning, and that fits really well with the um, with most of our models that we looked at. So, hurricane very soon, less than 24 hours from now. Looking at the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds are as follows, nearly at 100% chance now, and up now to 70% chance in Tampa Bay, Florida. So there's now most likely a likelihood that you will see tropical storm force winds and tropical storm force winds are winds that will do damage, blow down trees, power lines, property damage will result, including power outages. This needs to be taken seriously, even if you're not getting the center, because this system will be growing in size as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. And all preparations, again, in the Big Bend of Florida need to be completed in the next day or so, at least even in the next day and a half, even two days. Because once this gets very close to Florida, this could be a monster, or I should say will become a monster. Now, what really strikes me about this forecast is the storm surge forecast. This is pretty, pretty alarming from the National Hurricane Center on a tropical storm that is expected to become only a Category 3 hurricane. Keep in mind, only a Category 3 from the official forecast from the NHC. This could get stronger, and if this does, our storm surge numbers could still be on the increase. Indian Pass, 5 to 10 feet. Um, if you are in, say, um, the central portion of the Big Bend of Florida, like Steinhatchee, 10 to 15 feet. 10 to 15 feet of storm surge. That is extremely serious. That is to be taken quite concerning, quite serious. Tampa Bay, 5 to 8 feet, possibly as high as 9 feet feet, as high as nine feet. That is very uh, devastating for a very populated area. Uh, if you're in Bonita Beach, um, if you're in Eaglewood, you're looking at anywhere between three to maybe seven feet of storm surge. And down here, even in Flamingo, still thinking about two to four feet of storm surge on top of a high tide and high surf. I mean, this could, in theory, be unsurvivable storm surge flooding. This is really really serious and all preparations all preparations need to be completed as soon as possible rainfall forecast is also very concerning um, this is not what you want to see at all not just from a florida perspective but also way up here in the appalachians well inland from the system nashville chattanooga knoxville could see up to six inches of rainfall some of these higher elevations with the orographic effects you might see almost a foot of rainfall 
almost a foot of rainfall. That is pretty concerning. And then, of course, along Tallahassee, Tampa Bay, you could see up to 8 to 10 inches of rainfall, possibly a foot of rainfall, combined with the storm surge flooding. Man, this is almost certain, almost certain to lead to unsurvivable impacts, especially over the Big Bend area. Here's a look at the risk for flash flooding, uh, according to the Climate Prediction Center, not Climate Prediction Center, the Weather Prediction Center. You can see all this red area here indicates a moderate risk, a moderate risk for flash flooding. And that's not just at the coast, all right? This is also well inland in Atlanta, as well as in northwestern portion there of South Carolina. Again, for those folks that live up here, you need to take this seriously. Not just because, oh, I'm safe from the wind. You're not safe from the flooding at all. And that's why uh, you need to also get prepared for small stream flooding, urban flooding, street flooding, that sort of thing. Landslides, mudslides, that sort of thing, even rock slides. Oh man, this is this is this is concerning. This is not good. Not good at all. Tampa Bay under a slight risk and Mobile under a marginal to slight risk for heavy rainfall. This whole area, um, including even uh, away from the system like St. Louis under a slight risk for heavy rainfall too. So with that being said, I really hope you all get prepared for this because again, my job is making sure you all are prepared for this system. Right now, it is rapidly organizing. I guarantee we will see a hurricane on this by even late tonight or early tomorrow morning as this approaches the Yucatan Channel. There's a center once again. Do not stop preparing for this system as most of the forecasts that we looked at today still call this to become a strong Category 3, if not a Category 4, and at the very most bullish forecast, still a low-end Category 5 hurricane with winds up above 160 miles an hour. Well, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and also share this and like the video as well to get all my updates. I will have another update this afternoon in video format right around 2 to 3 o'clock. Probably going to time it with the next complete advisory from the NHC. So that video should be out at least hopefully by about 2, about by about 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you back here this afternoon, then a live stream this evening.